and uh, let's get going. All right, so I am so excited to introduce our first guest to you today, our keynote speaker, who uh, we honestly couldn't be more excited to talk to. Um, Ralph Macchio is an actor, producer, director. He's got so many credits under his belt, uh, no pun intended. Um, he's best known for his celebrated, celebrated performance um, uh, in um, Francis Ford Coppola's The Outsiders, the hit film, My Cousin Vinny, which I absolutely love, and probably most notably for the title role in the popular classic, The Karate Kid, um, and all of the successing movies and things that have come from it. Um, and expanding further on the Karate Kid universe, uh, Ralph continues to reprise this role in the hit Netflix series, uh, series Cobra Kai. He lives in Long Island with his family, and we are so happy to have you here today, Ralph. Okay, here I come. Hey, everyone. <laughs> wow, that worked. I was, I had my, my, finger on the trigger ready to hit it and and we yeah. appeared oh good good to be here thank you um and nice uh, ramp up and my cousin Vinny uh well you're from New Jersey right <laughs> so you're down the street and around the corner um but uh, uh great to be here and thanks yeah it's so nice to have you here um we've all learned um a lot about uh technology in the last couple of years so if anybody mm -hmm. has issues or anything let us know but Let's get talking about your book. We're so excited about your new book. Um, and I thought we could talk about um, the bigger picture of the book and then talk about some of the specifics of it. I have to put my glass on because this is just how it is now. Yeah. Um, but um, uh, Waxing On um, is gonna be a really fun book. People love you. It's You're, you're one of these iconic people in, um, in the zeitgeist all the time, really. I mean, because even though a lot of the movies that you did were like originally were a long time ago, they've stayed, you know, people that are, you know, my kids age and younger even still love um, love your movies and, and, and Karate Kid and everything that you do. So one of the bigger, one of the bigger questions I have is how does that feel to know, like some people do a movie and, you know, nobody remembers it or 20 years ago, it's very obscure, but I don't think anything that you've done has ever become obscure. So I'm just curious how that feels in, in a big way. <laughs> well, it, it, it's kind of a, it's an, a unique blessing that's kind of evolved over time. I mean, the Karate Kid being the, you know, the biggest in that, uh, in that grouping. I mean, The Outsiders is a, another one that was, I mean, started as a, a, a you know, S.E. Hinton novel and that I read in, in seventh grade when I was 12 and, um, you know, that's one that has stood the test of time, um, due in part to the fact that it's, you know, it's a, a required reading or it has been for so many decades in, in school and in middle schools. And my cousin Vinny is another one that just, um, it's a late for dinner movie. I call it because if it's on, you're just going to be late for dinner <laughs> because every setup pays off beautifully, but the karate kid is in a you know, another level of, of pop culture and cinema and, and relevance. I mean, that's part of one of the reasons I wrote Waxing On is um, uh, to sort of share my story walking in the shoes of this character, which is coming upon, you know, it's 38 years ago, 39 when I shot it. Um, and it uh, it's kind of a celebration of, of that character and that movie and, and its place in, in pop culture. It's... Uh, a look at it's I wanted it to be equal parts um, nostalgia and and contemporary relevance at the same time, which is in essence what has happened. Um, I, it's never kind of gone away for me. You know, some people will say everything I wrote this in the book, everything old is new again. And I hear that a lot. But for me, it never got old because the fans never allowed it to get old. It was always uh, current and relevant, just not necessarily at the level of a smash hit Netflix series that is a continuation. Um, it's very special uh, to to have that opportunity to to even play a character or tell a story or continue to uh, uh, continue the evolution of of a of a character in that in that certain world that that um, reaches two and three plus generations. I mean, it's this. I, I made a joke on Stephen Colbert when I said that back in the day, people were like, hey, aren't you the Karate Kid? And now they're like, hey, don't you play that my dad, the dad on my favorite TV show? And I'm like, yes, <laughs> that's me. I'm the dad on your favorite TV show. Uh, so it's kind of, it's rewarding in that way, you know, it keeps the legacy uh, going. 
Yeah, I read I read your book. It made me feel really old and really young at the same time. Um, <laughs> good, good. <laughs> yes, I you had sort of similar, you know, childhood things. Um, when I was thinking the part where you're talking about, you know, happy days and ships ahoy, like, how could you have a better life, you know, and now it's like all these years later and I, you know, between honestly, between like my cousin Vinny and the karate kid, I feel like these things are mentioned daily around, you know, even my house. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, a couple of years ago, when my kids started watching Cobra Kai, I remember my one son saying, mom, have you ever heard of this movie, The Karate Kid? I'm like, uh, yeah, I've heard of The Karate Kid. So it's just been really fun. Um, and also, I think one of the things, a lot of the book, you know, a lot of parts of the book, you you do, um, I don't want to say comparisons, but sort of to like the Rocky movie. And I think the reason why The Karate Kid and, and Rocky movies work in that way um, is because it brings really big themes to the pop culture and to people. It's like you kind of relate to somebody in in one way or another in the in these mm -hmm. um, in these films and in and, and the show and all that stuff. And I thought maybe do you think that the Karate Kid would have stayed so relevant over the years if it wasn't for the bigger themes of like feeling left out or feeling bullied? Um, do you think that those themes play a big part in it? Yeah, one hundred percent. I mean, the Karate Kid film uh, works on a human level, you know, um, and that's why. I mean, all the pop culture stuff to get him a body bag and was the kick legal and <laughs> and the you know the waxing on and and uh, you know painting fences and all the the chores becoming karate moves. That's all great storytelling, but but why I think it stands that that's the time is. And I, I hear this uh, almost daily, um, uh, is it affected people's lives in a way where they felt they, you know, Daniel LaRusso was the, the every kid next door. He had no business, and I think I write that he has no, he had no business winning anything. So uh, the fact that those aspirational qualities, those wish fulfillment element, but yet feeling grounded and connected to the journey he is on, uh, be it adolescence or or feel, feeling fish out of water or feeling, um, you know, out of balance in, in your life, the single parent uh, element of, of the Karate Kid film, uh, you know, a fatherless teen trying to navigate life, finding his human Yoda in Mr. Miyagi that, that, that guides him through this challenging time. I mean, we've all been in some form of that. Um, maybe not as successful as a Hollywood movie, but but we all feel a piece of of that character, and uh, and even going forward. And I think those themes, as you mentioned, whether it's the underdog overcoming obstacles or the the feeling, you know, um, the outsider (pun intended), um, are are elements of of human life, and and so it connects on that level. And I think that's what raises it above it being another 80s movie, you know, another 80s categorized movie is, uh, um, um, you know, it, it has a uh, resonance and depth to it. And Rocky was directed by the same uh, filmmaker, John Avelson, who I allude to a lot in this book because, um, you know, he took, he painted that canvas, you know, Robert Kamen wrote a beautiful screenplay and uh, but he uh, a testament to Cobra Kai's success is all these original characters that come back in the Cobra Kai series and are just knocking it, hitting it out of the park. And and it's it's um it's like great comfort food to see Elizabeth <laughs> Chu and to see Randy Heller and to see um you know Martin Cove and Thomas Ian Griffith come back as their characters. It 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 started someplace, you know, and that's why. Um, a big part of this book for me was, you know, it's interesting. I never liked history in school. And as I'm getting older and I'm ironically become part of history <laughs> in an odd way, um, I, I enjoy talking about the past and why we got to where we are. And, and the Waxing On book does that um, with where, the sh where those char these characters are, where my life is, what I've gained from it, missteps, do-overs I'd like. Um, uh, the the rich rewards of playing a character that means so much to people. That's what I wanted to share. Yeah, I love that. I feel like a lot of books um, become these like weird scandalous tell-alls. And this is really just a celebration 
I feel like there's a lot of humility in it where you, you know, you talk about how you, um, you know, didn't realize some of the things you were doing were bigger than they were at the time. And um, I love how you and Pat stayed friends over the years. So a lot of, a lot of these human connections really are, are really important in the book. And, and it's nice to see as a fan. Um, and I feel like, you know, lately, I feel like the last couple of years we've been, we've been, you know, hearing how separated and, and divided people are. So when something can bring people together, I, I just don't think there's anything more important than that right now. So mm -hmm. I feel like that is what I really appreciate about this book. It's it's a it's a celebration, but it's also like, you know, it's not a perfect book. Everybody, you know, there's a lot of, you know, aspects of it where you're like, well, I made a mistake here and there. And, you know, that's all right. We've, we've become so unforgiving of little things. And I think I love that you're so honest in it. And how how was that process for you? That's great. First of all, thanks for, for saying that, because, I mean, I launched into writing the book proposal before we ever pitched to publishing, you know, publishing houses and such. I mean, it was about we were locked in the pandemic and uh, in the early part of it, uh, I didn't know if Cobra Kai was going to get another season. Um, and I was, you know, we were all in our houses and I was just uh, it just felt like and everything was so divided politically and 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 everything you know was upside down in 2020 and um it just felt like i had something that could kind of cohesively break all those bar barriers and there would not be it would not have any prejudice or it would just be my story in the shoes of this character and i wanted to be honest with the ups and downs of it um um and and uh, it sort of broke down in three acts in a way. The first act of the book is really the making of the behind the scenes stories of how some of the most iconic moments came to be, the getting cast and working with other co-stars. The second act is kind of the afterlife. What happened when when the crane takes flight? What happened to my life? What, what uh, the highs and lows of all that? And then sort of navigating through that that those years and then the last act is really the lessons from the experience and lessons in my life the give backs the the uh wisdom that you gain over time and um and uh and then a, a tribute to the fans that's sort of kind of how it, it played and i i felt the only way i could tell the story is by being honest with my my feelings and genuine and no there's only one person you talk about the tell-alls and the scandalous you know memoirs and uh this is sort of i call myself the anti e true hollywood story <laughs> yeah, love that. i write that that uh <laughs> in the book and and um in a way um you know i i learned lessons over that time and the only person that gets thrown under the bus in this book if anyone is me is you i was gonna and, say you're the only person that you're hard on this, in this yeah but because i <laughs> and i also listen self-deprecation is my you know it's what's for dinner <laughs> it's like sarcasm and self-deprecation are my favorite hobbies so um but in a humble earnest way not in a you know uh gratuitous kind of way yeah no it's it's funny i i think it's it's really i think everyone who hasn't read it is in for a real treat um for so many reasons. Um, so I don't, I, there's questions I know the librarian sent in. So I just want to ask you one or two more and then I'll, we'll sure. get to those. Um, but something I really wanted to say, which is interesting because like life just is so strange and I never expected in my whole life, I'd be talking to you one-on-one, -on -one. but I have to tell you during COVID, one of the, and this will get into the Cobra Kai part of the conversation. Um, one of the things I appreciated so much during COVID was you know how it was for a while there was no new content like if you were watching something new it was just because you hadn't seen it before but it wasn't actually new and i really appreciated that your cast and crew and you guys did that next season of cobra kai and it was one of the only new things that came mm -hmm. out for a while um and i remember very specifically feeling very um cheered up from that so how was that process of being like one of the only shows to be filming in that time. And what made you guys decide to do that? Well, what, what actually happened um, um, at the point that we went into the lockdown, we had shot season three of, of Cobra Kai, but YouTube where it originally was, was not moving forward with ordering a fourth season um, because Google who owns YouTube, I won't spend a lot of time with this, but they were changing their 
their their uh, you know their plan, and they were leaving the scripted community. So now we had season three in the can, and we wanted to see if we can move the show. In essence, we moved it to Netflix. But this was at a point that the world is shutting down, and we're asking a company to buy a show. So we knew we had the content. We didn't. So we had it in the in our back pockets. Um, it was about making the deal, Sony Television. So, um, so in essence, that when that happened, and then Cobra Kai season three came out, that was done a while back. It just it was lost in translation, if you will, or held. It was in, and so. But then we wound up shooting season four and five during the pandemic, during the second half of the pandemic, back to back. Um, and, uh, that's in essence when I wrote, uh, the, you know, waxing on, I was writing that we were in the bubble and we were shooting, you know, you know, getting tested three, four times a week, face masks, the whole thing, doing scenes. And then I, I'd, I'd order room service, I'd order food in and I'd sit at my computer and talk about the first time I met Elizabeth Shue or what Pat Morita <laughs> brought to my life or, that one role that I wish I could have had, or, you know, all those things started to yeah. be nostalgic and emotional uh, going down that place. And um, there were more than a few times where I was brought to, you know, sort of, I mean, I didn't have tears running down my face, but there were moments that I got choked up and, uh, and, and the eyes brimming with tear, just uh, <laughs> thinking about a moment, thinking about some of the people that aren't here anymore that helped create this, piece of uh, uh cinema artistry that it, i now am still uh, portraying Pretty yeah wonderful. no i i i can imagine because I, I love books like this i love stories like this where everybody knows where they were at a certain time and mm -hmm. um, i mean i appreciated your your um shout out to elizabeth shoe in the book and i got like a moment where i was like oh i remember and then like you just have these moments where you remember and, and you're right there's people that aren't in your life anymore and um you know these i like waxing on because it's a book that celebrates life in the, especially this book it's so good at like having a celebrating the past but then also you created this new universe that's going to keep mm -hmm. going so it's kind of just timeless and you know, it reminds me of my dad and then it reminds me of my kids and I'm sure their kids are going to watch it. It's just really a really wonderful uh, moment in, in culture for this. And um, one, one Cobra Kai question I wanted to, to ask you, um, and then um, we'll get to some of the librarian questions is that I think that I was a huge How I Met Your Mother fan and so was my, mm -hmm. my older son. And he said, so he, that's why he watched Credit Kid because he wanted to see who was right in the whole like right, 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 Johnny, yeah. you know uh, argument with you. And uh, he said, "Mom, you know um, Barney's right. You know that was that was an illegal kick. <laughs> so it's kind of this fun ethical thing. But the bigger point is, I think that what Cobra Kai has that the Karate Kid did it was what I think all of us have been." become better at over the years is empathy. Like, yeah. I don't think any of us ever even considered taking Johnny's perspective when we watched the Karate Kid. Like, uh, yeah, you were the new kid. We all felt bad for you in the movie and then, you know, in the stories. But, you know, Johnny, you did. You showed up, you know, this new guy. And it's interesting how empathy has become really important. Mm -hmm. um, and I think Cobra Kai is so good at getting everybody's story and realizing right. that somebody can have this, a story and react one way, and then somebody can have the same story and react a different way. Yeah. How important is that part of it for you and, and the lessons that you're teaching there? Yeah, it's very much so. I mean, listen, the movies of the 80s, uh, not all of them, but certainly were very black and white, and Karate Kid is very black and white. You mm -hmm. know, uh, Miyagi Good, Chris Bad, Daniel Hero, Johnny Jerk, um, <laughs> and uh, and that's, you know, th that worked for that story. Um, um, the How I Met Your Mother of It All, that writer's room, and I, I do allude to that in, I, I guess, chapter eight, uh, theories and debates and the birth of Cobra Kai. <laughs> um, it's, uh, it, it becomes the internet and fan conventions started. That's where all that happened. I mean, you know, Miyagi, Mr. Miyagi steals a black belt and just gives it to Daniel because you need one to get in. That's pretty illegal, too. I mean, there's so many. But, you know, this is it's a movie, folks. You know, we have to tell the story. <laughs> What's wonderful about Cobra Kai and what John, Josh and Hayden, uh, the creators of that show do 
is dive into the gray areas of all these characters and peel back the onion layers of what, why is a bully a bully? Where does that start? What is the, um, you're not necessarily born a bully. Um, and, and if you, if things come a little too easy for you, do you do get a little antagonistic with your pride? Does Daniel LaRusso um, become a little full of himself, you know, because he has that cocky element. And uh, we would debate back and forth. There are times I don't feel Daniel Russo would have necessarily turned out to be exactly how he was in the early parts of the seasons of Cobra Kai. But now it's kind of found its own where there's a little good and a little bad in everybody. And it's about navigating and falling, skinning your knees, getting back up and and fixing it going forward, even though you can't get out of your own way. Um, and you're stuck in your teen uh, high school rivalry. Um, it's uh, it's a fresh angle into a, a world of beloved characters, and then you add other shades of gray to them, and they become more fully realized as as we all are. Yeah, it's really fun. It's really um, there. There are so many great life lessons. Um, I think it's important for people to have that one person in their life they could count on. There's so many things about it. Um, I honestly was like, I don't, I was nervous to like ask you questions because I thought, what if we run out of things to talk about? I feel like I could talk to you all day, but Jen, why don't you come on and, and ask some of the questions that were put in the chat so that we can, um, that we can talk about that. And we also know for like audio, yeah. audio book, uh, audio book fans, um, you read the audio, which we're so excited. Yes. To yes. When, I was you're, so... when you're reading it, I can hear your voice anyway. So I think it's going to, the audio book's going to be great. <laughs> yeah, I think that was, I was, uh, not looking forward to that because it just seemed <laughs> like such an arduous task and it was, uh, it was tough because the first time I'd ever done it. And plus, you know, I'd like to talk, but I'm, I get tired of hearing myself, like reading, reading it all at once was a lot, but, um, I had a great director and a great team. And, and once I found the rhythm, I think it's like, you know, like I'm it's just what you're hearing right now. That, that That's really my voice and, and my words. So I think that's, uh, it's going to be nice to see how that, how people, uh, respond to it. Yeah, I think that's so important to hear the author's voice. I mean, I know that's a really, um, you know, amazing way to hear an audiobook. You know it best, right? Mm. You could um, have you could have had the title be uh, Two Utes." We were hoping. For that. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so Jen, I'll let uh, you get to some of the questions. Yeah, and I'll just say first of all, I know you've been busy talking. I hope you get a chance after to look in the chat because it's just been amazing to see how much love is out there and how many. Oh, that's people, great! Thank you. you know, really, are are sharing their stories of how the Karate Kid or Outsiders touched them. Um, I saw someone named glasses. I see they're popping up. I just don't have my glasses uh, because of it. So um, you we'll know, send them. Wonderful. We'll send you all the comments. Oh, great. That'll yeah, be so nice. yeah, we Thank can you. download them all and send Thank them. You. Perfect. Um, all right. So I warned you this was coming, but okay. um, of course, <laughs> with librarians, they always want to hear your favorite library story, library memory. Um, can you tell tell them? Um, you know, just something about libraries. What what you think? Uh, where they're going? What they mean to you? Well, I, I mean, the library story that comes to mind for me is one that it sort of um, connects with the early part of my career is the first, I think the two books that I, I, uh, I'm sure the first book that I read cover to cover was The Outsiders, followed closely by Of Mice and Men. Some of the reasons for this is I was not a great reader and I looked for the skinny books. <laughs> <laughs> Like a tree grows in Brooklyn, yeah, it's a little fat for me. I need an, you know. So I I recall um, my seventh grade teacher, uh, librarian and English teacher, Mrs. Schwartz, um, who took out of the class to uh, in the library at, at my middle school, which was Burgers Lane Junior High School, um, and and she presented The Outsiders. She presented the book to us and we all handed out the handed the book and I'm like okay well this one looks cool on the front you know like this group of guys and I I remember starting to read that book and uh and you know I read most of it at home or in the classroom after that but I that book had such a such a profound effect on my life and career because I fell in love with it and I felt one of these outsiders because we all, like I alluded to before, have that moment in adolescence where we necessarily don't feel like we fit in and 
uh, the social class differences and everything else. And uh, although I had a very different and much more blessed life than the Johnny Cade character in The Outsiders, I got to, I connected with uh, his physicality, how he looked, how he carried himself, the fact that he didn't feel as up to it as some of the bigger kids. And me being the youngest looking in my class, which I'm still trying to keep going, trying to hold back, keep the camera back a little further. <laughs> and, uh, and so, um, and I got to be in that movie. I got to, I got to play the part of a lifetime. So that all stemmed from a piece of literature. Um, and, uh, but I don't have many other, like, this is the day I did this in the library, or this is, I mean, I remember there was a fight in one of my school libraries. <laughs> I was in the library and I just hear this yelling and these two kids are- Very Cobra Kai, right? <laughs> yeah, that, that, maybe that, you know, I wonder if that was foreshadowing right there. <laughs> I started with the outsiders and then the Karate Kid is happening right in front of me. That's a pretty good library story. Uh, I'll yeah. take it. Uh, <laughs> all right, and then, uh, I th you kind of alluded to this earlier, but uh, one of the librarians wrote, I know that Mr. Miyagi taught Daniel lessons, but what lessons did Pat Morita teach you? Oh, I love that question. Uh, yeah, he, you know what? Um, he taught me, uh, and not, not maybe not directly, uh, not, not like I'm going to teach you this besides ordering sushi, which is <laughs> true. Um, so there's that. You know, and I, I, I write that a little bit in the book, how we would go out and I only ordered the cook stuff and he'd have the raw stuff. And then as our, our relationship evolved pretty soon, I was ordering, you know, the, the sashimi and stuff like that. And, but I think he taught me as an actor, um, um, the, his genuine dedication to, to his role and how much of a responsibility he felt in uh in in carrying the legacy of his character was something that i bring uh every day on cobra kai today because i feel i am now the mentor to the young the young cast and i i enjoy uh, uh being a hopefully a good example to them uh in work ethics and just um how i approach uh things and i think i took a piece of that from how important it was to him to portray this Japanese Japanese American character in an authentic way, and hence, you know, we have Mr. Miyagi, which is one of the, you know, great characters in cinema and pop culture for that matter. Right. Definitely. Maybe uh, Jen will ask one more question so we don't keep you on too long. Um, okay. Actually, uh, I I saw this both in our Google Doc and in the chat, so I'm going to have to end with this one. Um, okay. A librarian said that the Cobra Kai franchise inspired her to start taking karate. Um, any advice on how to find confidence? She's a 21 year old female librarian. And when her sensei found out she was a librarian, he teased her about finding her voice. He teased her. First of all, the fact that my, my first answer to that, that is uh, that makes one of us as far as who's taking martial arts right now. I'm on a break, <laughs> but I'll be getting back in. It was way easier when I was 20, uh, 20 and 21 years old. Um, uh, so the sensei teased her about finding her. Yes, about because she's a librarian. Because <laughs> well, then we, we have to, you know, we have to test his, his or her knowledge on uh on some great pieces of literature then, you know, so I think that, um, I, I don't know how to answer that. I mean, if I, if, if, so, if, I, if someone's a librarian who's coming in to, to take martial arts, I just think that that broadens the horizon, horizons and adds more uh, depth and, and relevance to that, that person. I mean, first of all, martial arts is cool especially now um the miyagi do theory is you know philosophy is what i believe in and i truly live my life that way you know uh the karate is for defense only and all those all those finding balance i mean balanced diet balanced marriage balance uh and and everything you know i've tried to always keep kind of one foot in and one foot out of hollywood and and normal life if you will um so those are all all elements that that I'm, you know, and I I support, but uh, I don't. Know, I need to meet this uh, sensei to make fun of my, <laughs> my 21 year old librarian friend. Um, I'm a librarian and a martial arts. I mean, come I know, on, come on, it's no great. stopping you, no stopping you. Yeah, we should we should have her on on uh, Cobra Kai and uh, 
you know, we'll have all the senseis just go <laughs> pay her sensei a visit. Oh, we got a couple martial artist librarians. There we go. Right. I love it. Now that's a whole niche area. Who knows? <laughs> Truly, I, I, I think maybe that should be an episode. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's it. No, I, I like it. Take, it'd be so different than the music band librarian character. If you yeah, had right. a librarian that started kicking people. <laughs> right. Or just you know, keeping them in check. Well, gosh, Ralph, this has been such an honor. I mean, just so fun. There's so many things. Um, and like I said, this book is such a treat for all of you. Um, your talk about um your when you gave Pat Morita the 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 um, award and in, in you know in oh, real yeah, life and all that it's so touching. Yeah. Um, it, I always love when when there's an on screen like the fact that he was such a mentor to you on screen and then that important to you in real life. Um, it, that's just really a, that's just touching and it, it's inspiring and I think people should look for their own Mr. Miyagi or or people should look for their own persons that will help them grow all the time. So yeah, I believe that. I mean, with Pat, it was you know part of that over time was because during those certain years that we were, you know, in the late 90s and early 2000s, um, you know, we hadn't seen each other in a long time. You know, you just, life gets in the way, but then you get, I'd like to believe that I got, I got wiser. So those moments meant more and, and any missteps or, or times absence of communication, when you have that opportunity to, to thank someone or to, uh, share in a moment, especially as one as special as we've had uh, him and I and in, th in this these roles and what they mean to the world. Um, uh, you take that in and just consider yourself blessed. So and he felt that way, uh, too. Yeah, I, I love that. So thank you so much for joining us. We did we you're right, Jen, we got so many wonderful comments. We will make sure to get them all Definitely. to your public desk to share with you. Great. Um, and good luck with the book. Good luck with the rest of Cobra Kai. Thank life. you. I mean, everything. It's been an um, honor to meet busy you. Busy fall. Busy fall yeah. coming up. Um, I'm excited. <laughs> Knowing that all your hard work is appreciated by a lot of people. So. Oh, great. Absolutely. You. Yeah. I hope people buy in the book and and uh, and it, it has a positive uh, uh, impact. And and on our program, we're going to share. There's a link where people can get an autographed copy too. So yep. even yep. even better. Really tired. <laughs> <laughs> I bet. How many? They did you made sign? you read a lot. They made you sign a, a lot. lot. We made you work a lot. Like <laughs> they keep they keep coming back. I'm like you're done. No, we need more. Okay, <laughs> that's a good. I think it's a good. I'm hoping it's a good sign. That awesome. Is awesome. Okay. Thanks so much, guys. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Take care. We really appreciate Bye -bye, it. Everyone out there. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much. Bye. I'm leaving too, Kelly. All right. So that was ex how 